I'm with Diane Walker Gamble and uh, she is Walker Gamble on Instagram at Walker Gamble. Have a look at that. And uh, she's just bought this fantastic ammonite fossil here, preserved in white calcite. It's called a Malpheus. And you can see the chambers the creature had that it filled with water or gas to give its buoyancy in the sea so it could go up and down like a modern day flotation device, a bit like a submarine. It jetted out water with a siphuncle going backwards through the sea and anything bearing down on it, like an ichthyosaur or something, it could squirt out ink and that's the way it would disguise itself. A bit of camouflage there with the ink. And it had a sharp beak in between the tentacles, a bit like a parrot's beak. And that was sort of grabbing small ichthyosaurs and fish. And the parrot-like beak, a chap from Wet Pets, he was telling me, he put a large carp in a very big tank with a small cuttlefish with a similar ammonite beak and it shredded a big carp in seconds. You can imagine what a big ammonite would have been like back in the Jurassic. A big ammonite of about sort of 65 centimetres across. That's one that we found and that's in the card if you can see and that's in the foster collection. A really big fossil from Monmouth Beach. We found that, brought it back on a stretcher, four of us carrying it like so along to get it back and that's in the foster display. So. Another part of this fossil collection here that we'll show you is one that Diane found out on the beach just <laughs> yesterday and it's Carboniferous Limestone and it was it's derived, it's been put down as part of the sea defence work. The lorries were cracking the wheels across this to get out with their dumping trucks and stuff. So that's limestone, you can see little bits of crinoidal limestone in there, probably part of Caninia coral there, that calcite on the outside. And then she's found a lovely trace fossil there. You can see probably some sort of worm burrow or something in that limestone rock. That's a really nice one. And uh, it's not all about the fossils. There's some really interesting trace fossils. Uh, there's another one uh, that you can see out there on the beach called Flacenoides, a shrimp. And it's got a kind of sort of U-bend type uh, trace fossil that it leaves because it was curled up in the sea floor so it leaves a very definite trace fossil a bit like that but this one is a worm burrow you see it's gone so many directions there and then Diane's won these lovely fossils here if you want to come a bit closer into your collection of fossils she won this at Mary Anning Rocks so some wonderful sea urchins she won in her collection and some beautiful little bits of crinoidal limestone there preserved with belemnites in as well and these little polished pieces are fantastic from the crinoidal limestone beds um, probably from near golden cap you've got quite a lot of the belemnite miles that come down out to sea and get washed around and turned over and another little belemnite there the guard of the sea creature the belemnite polished up beautiful little pieces here's a bit that she's going to do some work on and it's a lovely impression there of an ammonite in the limestone rock. Here, well preserved Microdorossus birchi ammonites, named after Colonel Birch, who discovered them back along, walking out there with Mary Anning, the famous fossil woman he was. So, birchi ammonites, really lovingly prepared little specimen that from a collection. There's the typical birchi rock that you find on the beach. So, also, Amongst all the flint sea urchins here, there's some chert sea urchins made of sponge spicules, the chert bed is. That one's actually labelled from the collection. So a really good win you've got here and giving all that money towards the Mary Anning rock statue, absolutely fantastic. Here's a little specimen preserved in limestone and it's called Orphechiosaurus, this ammonite preserved in the watch ammonite stone and it's been polished up as well. And some typical ammonites here called Promicroceris. Someone's had a tap at those to get them out of the rock. Something that you can find every day at low tide along the Jurassic coast. As long as you don't dig in the cliffs in situ, you're allowed to find these fossils that push out along the shoreline. The sea doing the work for you. And then here, a little green ammonite polished up in a very, very small piece of the rock. Nice one to see. 
they've, beautiful. Yeah, they've done a lot of work on that, haven't they, to get that up to scratch. And then um, a lovely collection here with this flint sea urchin. You can see the original matrix still on it. So a lovely, lovely piece to see the matrix there, the flint on the flint sea urchin. So if I'm looking for flint sea urchins, that is the sort of rock I need to be yep, looking, looking out at, for. Yeah, yeah, and also too, just mm. looking for various, various shapes protruding out of the rock. Mm. And uh, obviously if you do tap any of the flint rock, it's best to wear safety glasses because the safety glasses you need to have on because this flint breaks like glass and I recommend sturdy gloves as well when you're tapping the right rocks, um, especially the limestone layered rocks. This one here, someone's had a tap at mm -hmm. and the line of weakness was the fossil inside so it just tended to pop off the rock. Well, Diane's now going to try and prepare our fossil for herself. And this must be some kind of chalk. Yeah, it's really firing off nicely, that mm -hmm. um, Jurassic Age limestone. Mm -hmm. That's a Rinconella decorata fossil shell from the Jurassic that Diane walker Campbell mm. is doing her work on to pick it out of the matrix with a hardened steel pin. My first ever. I said, I, I can't believe Mary Anning did this all by hand so many years ago on giant specimens. Let's have a look at what you're preparing there, Diana. If you twizzle it around for me, I'll just show you. Wow, yeah, a really three-dimensional Rinconella decorata shell. There we go. Diane is about to varnish this amazing little brachiopod that she prepared here. Mm. So what you need to do is mix the varnish 50-50 out of these pots here. Okay. And uh, just a little bit in. If it doesn't come out because it's a bit sort of gummed up, then just take the brush to it and uh, okay. put that in the uh, end and bring some out. And then once you start, that's it. Yeah. So once you put that in there and then add the more liquefied gloss varnish in. The gloss varnish will uh, will make it uh, much more runny. Little, little dab, yeah, you got that right. Okay. Just like my art projects at home. Excellent. That's a really good mix. It really needs to be mixed in well because I found if it doesn't get mixed in well, as you paint it on, it starts to dry. It turns a bit white. Mm. Whereas you'll have a lovely yeah. varnish on this uh, actual uh, shell specimen for doing this work. Okay. This looks the right viscous nature to this varnish. Okay, so... So here's the shell you've been working on. Oh, look at that. Doesn't it come up nicely for just Ooh. doing that work on that lovely brachiopod? Wow. With the picture varnish applied, I can show you the finished result and also an iron pyrite ammonite that Diana has found on the beach, fossil collecting. Diane was preparing this ammonite preserved in calcite. You can see another little one on the edge here. And on tapping it apart, she's got this little fossil in the palm of her hand, lovely. Yeah, that's it. Here's Diane Gamble all the way from America with a lovely little ammonite that she's found next to another little ammonite and with a circulid worm there sitting on the top of that mm. specimen, a small Jurassic fossil find. And here you see Mary, the sculpture of her. Diane came all the way over here to see the opening ceremony of Mary Anning's sculpture being unveiled. Oh, oh, another one to take home and work on. Another one to do at home. Fantastic. A lot of work there. I can't wait.